Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and yesterday I went to a mall with my family. We went to see a movie, a Japanese anime movie called Kimetsu no Yaiba, which is like a demon slayer movie. And it was my first time seeing a Japanese movie. It was pretty good, and uh, the girls liked it. And at the mall, there was a watch shop, and I stopped by. What did I see? Let's check it out. All right, so here's the store, and first up, Seiko 5 and Street Fighter 5 have teamed up. They've got six limited editions. Each one is like a different character. I'll put a link in the description of this video to the Seiko site. You can check it out. It's pretty interesting, and uh, these are about 450 USD, and like I said, limited edition, 9,999 pieces of each, and uh, I think this is probably one of the cooler ones. Now, you can't really see it here, but the the face is like a gi material type uh, look. And uh, they had all six here and, uh, you know, a little expensive. And I don't know, if you're just getting into watches, you're a young person, you'll love Street Fighter V. I can, I can see going for it. Here we have an aristocrat special. This is perfect for a uh, budding fake aristocrat because it's, yes, fake gold, blingy, gaudy but it's easy on the pocketbook. There's a silver win for the fake aristocrat that prefers the platinum look. This was probably the best piece in the store. I take a closer look at it later, but it's a perfectly sized GMT Grand Seiko SBGE 253. It's got the ceramic bezel and uh, GMT function, spring drive, well-placed date at the four, crown at the four, power reserve indicator. More on this watch later. To the left of it, a more traditional version without an informational bezel. Dressier look, more traditional date placement. Still a spring drive, still a GMT. And that tag on the first GMT we looked at says Ninki Modoru, just means popular model. And a Grand Seiko automatic with a silver dial, probably the answer to a simple date chest or an oyster perpetual. A versatile piece without too much personality. And beautiful blue dial here, great sizing. I think I would prefer if it was the high beat, but that blue really pops. It's almost like a, a bluesy sub blue. And this is a 60th anniversary Grand Seiko model, and you've got that single star on the dial and the red second hand. This, of course, is a quartz piece. Like so many Seikos, this is a limited production model, only 2,500 pieces. Three Grand Seiko spring drives. Now, take note of the sizes. Look at the two on the left. Now, that's the bigger case size. I want to say it's 41 millimeters, and that's always been a complaint of mine about the spring drives. They usually come in these, these bigger cases. They just look a little too big, and Grand Seiko has seemed to have shifted to some smaller models. Again, this is a great watch. It just a, a watch this big, to me, needs a bezel, all right, to balance out that big, like, plate-like look. I'm kind of picky about that, but this one right here, perfect size. I want to say this is probably 36 or 37 millimeters. Absolutely perfect, but it's a spring drive and it's got a cool uh, sort of honeycomb pattern on the dial. That's my pick of the three by far. And finally, they're making decent sized, more compact spring drives. Some more footage of the GS Bluesy. And that tag means that this piece falls outside the store-wide sale that they were having. The blue dial is supposed to symbolize the blue sky over Mount Iwate, where the Grand Seiko studio in Shizuku Ishii is. There's a lot of fascinating symbolism in GS design choices. This is a new limited edition Astron model, and it's just a completely different kind of watch than what I'm into and what my viewers are into. Uh, these are GPS watches, solar watches, you know, the height of technology, but just not really our thing. This is more a kind of thing. Well, it's quartz, so we're getting there, though. It's uh, the more traditional look, more traditional watch. I think quartz is, uh, well, it's got its place. These are solar watches, so you don't have to worry about changing a battery. That could be pretty convenient. Here's a chronograph with a rotating bezel date between the four and five. A lot of functions on the watch. Could be very uh, handy daily wear. Another popular model tag on this one, this is an automatic. So this is more kind of my thing. And probably if you're watching this video, your thing. Crown at the three on this one, crown at the four on these two. And the one on the right looks like um, a Hulk of sorts with that green color. Did Rolex inspire that? Anyway, these are mid-tier options and 
something I've always kind of avoided because they really deplete the bank account, but they're not too accurate and ultimately kind of unsatisfying, not really sustainably wearable for the long term. So my advice would be go cheap or add more to your watch fund and, and go big. These are even cheaper and I imagine pretty tempting for the new watch enthusiast. Still, I would go sub 200 USD. A lot of good options with Orient, Seiko for that kind of money. Here's a closer look at what I thought was the best watch in the shop. GMT function, good date placement, comfortable crown at the four. You've got the power indicator, which is kind of interesting, kind of fun to play with. The proportions on this watch were absolutely perfect. The case has lug holes, so if you want to change bracelets or put on a strap, that's going to be really easy. It's got a sign screw down crown at the four, which is kind of different and it's going to be more comfortable. You're not going to get the crown digging into your wrist. Now, criticism here, it could have a display case back. I think that would be a little bit more interesting. I'd like to see that spring drive movement. The ceramic bezel on this watch doesn't rotate, so it could be more functional. They do make three models with rotating bezels, but it's a different aesthetic. They have gold accents, and I don't think they're as uh, wearable in all scenarios as this black dialed version. Now, even better than this is a blue dialed, blue bezeled version with a light blue 24 hour hand and GMT written in light blue. If you have a thing for blue dials, that would be the way to go. As far as a brand new high quality wristwatch goes, the price on this is pretty good. You know, it's not going to satisfy the Rolex fanboys, but it's full of functions. You could use it in just about any scenario. If you're going to be really picky, you might say it doesn't double as a dress watch, but it could in this day and time. So you can see the power indicator is just about, uh, well, it's not quite topped off. I just wound it a little bit and you can see the spring drive going and then I wound it a little bit more, watch the power indicator power up and there it is completely full. If you're not a hopeless Rolex fanboy, this could be a great watch to last you for decades. All right, I'll put a link in the description to this Grand Seiko SBGE and the other five versions. And what I thought was really interesting is just one of those SBGEs has what I would describe as a Rolex pre-ceramic GMT font on the bezel. The other five versions have what looks pretty similar to the Rolex ceramic GMT bezel font. So that's kind of weird. Check that out. What's with that one anomaly? It, it looks great, but it just makes it look a little bit more retro. And it's weird that they chose just one model to have that sort of pre-ceramic serif on the, on the bezel. I really like what Grand Seiko is doing these days and I have a new respect for them. And it started with this piece. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment in the comment section. Give me a like and consider subscribing. Take care. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.